Thank you for joining us here at the Henry Street Church of Christ Wednesday night Bible class. It's certainly our honor and our pleasure to have you in the midst of us here as well. Of course, we meet here on Facebook Live as well as the recorded versions through YouTube. So know that you always have an open invitation to uh, study the Word of God with us and fellowship with us. But even more so, we would love to have you in person with us as we meet on Sunday mornings at the following address. 309 Henry Street in the city of Gadsden, Alabama. 35901 is our zip code. And of course, you can find more information about us the electronic way and the most convenient, easy way going to our website being www.henrystreetchurchofchrist.com. And we meet every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. So if you find yourself in the Northeast Alabama area or just make a trip to come on out, we'll treat you like royalty when you get there. And of course, I want to tell you up front, we're not one of those organizations that are out there to be like telemarketers or televangelists, which pretty much are the same thing. Uh, we're not here to get any money out of you. We're not here to scheme you. We're not here to trick you in any way. We're here to give, not take. And so we're here to uh, share in the fellowship of Christ with you and to do the right thing by you, not for money, but because it is what Christ would do instead. So I encourage you to come on out again. Meet us on Sunday mornings at uh, 309 Henry Street in the city of Gadsden, Alabama. And tonight we're going to continue our study in the book of Romans. And we're going to be talking about the compromises that Christians must, must make with each other in order to keep the unity. That, that is, again, the compromises Christians must make to keep Christian unity that are not in violation, of course, of the scriptures. Really quickly, before getting into our lesson tonight, we want to make sure that you're aware of the free resources that we provide out there. God has really blessed us in this ministry, meaning that we have been doing videos for YouTube as well as TikTok and other media uh, for over six years now. And so we have a vast library of topics at your disposal that you can take advantage of 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, one of our free resources that we have out there is our YouTube site. You can reach us by, of course, going to the master site, www.youtube.com. Type in my name, Anthony L. Norwood, or the Henry Street Church of Christ, and it should populate our site there at YouTube. In other words, YouTube calls it a channel. You know you've come to the right place if the banner on top says Bible Study Series and my picture's there with my alias in YouTube being Jesus is Lord in honor of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in typical YouTube fashion, uh, we do use the formatting that's provided there for us in the YouTube channel. And YouTube has uh, one, two, three, four, five tabs there. Of course, one being the home uh, tab or the other one being videos one being playlists one being channels and about uh, the ones to pay attention to are the ones that um, is the home page and that's going to give you the last five videos that were released by us and we're blessed to do in other words and of course they're going to be the most current ones but also you do have a playlist feature there that's another uh, tab there on the YouTube site in which you can go to categories. That's all playlist is, is a fancy way of saying categories, where we have everything organized in a way in which you can take advantage of it in an organized fashion. You can come and pick and choose what you want to study at that particular time. And I'll explain that in just a moment. But first, before getting into the playlist features, let's discuss um, the ability to work as a team to get the word of God out there. We do encourage you to subscribe, like, and share the videos here. And in doing so, you become an ally with uh, being a courier of God's word throughout the earth. We are so interconnected now that geography doesn't mean that much anymore when it comes to us communicating with each other. And YouTube is a good format for doing that. So when you subscribe, you get the automatic notifications every time you log into YouTube that we've posted a video, which we do daily, of course, as I mentioned. And also, if you like and subscribe, you make the videos more popular. Uh, the way they have YouTube's algorithm made, in other words, the way they program it, the more likes and shares you have, the more popular you are when it comes to searches. Like, for instance, if we look up the word Bible, we'll come up more often if we have more likes and shares out there. Uh, it's a popularity contest, unfortunately, there. Not a truth contest. So we need all lovers of truth, all lovers of righteousness, all lovers of God to help us spread this message. It only takes you a couple seconds in order to do so in the videos that you study, you know, uh, you study and you enjoy and you're built up and comforted by 
uh, your sales. But also going back to the playlist, uh, again, we have them organized. You'll see I have some highlighted on the screen being uh, the one minute inspirations, which is our daily devotional. So we take anywhere from one to maybe six, seven minutes, depending on how long the topic and how elaborate the discussion needs to be on that one. Um, we post those daily. And uh, so, that, so they'll keep you motivated. Uh, they'll keep you encouraged. They'll give you spiritual instruction throughout the day. It'll be just what you need on that day. I promise if you come with an open mind to the word of Almighty God. We also have on the screen where we're pointing to the one that's called Romans at Playlist. That is, we in our style of Bible study, uh, we go through a whole book of the Bible from the beginning to the end, verse by verse, or small groups of verses at, at the same time. That way we don't violate context. In other words, a lot of people make a huge mistake by just grabbing a concordance and, and looking up a word and picking out a scripture here or there, but they forget that these verses are also married to entire paragraphs in the Bible, entire chapters, entire themes in the book, an entire theme throughout the Bible. So you can't just take one verse and think you know what God is saying. You have to study all verses on that topic as well as all of the surrounding information God gives around that topic in order to not misinterpret what God is saying by just taking a few words here and there. So that's why we study in that way, because we want 100 percent accuracy, because one word can make the difference between heaven and hell, literally, because if you add a word, you can make people uh, believe things that are false and do things that are false and displeasing to God. If you subtract one word, it can be the same thing. So we're slow and methodical on purpose because we want 100% accuracy. But nonetheless, going back to those playlists, um, we do have certain topics. For instance, we have uh, marriage, divorce, and remarriage for some of the more advanced stuff. Second coming for more some more of the van advanced stuff, the second coming of Jesus, that is. Um, we have... Um, sound doctrine which are the fundamentals more the elementary part of the christian faith so if you never had that uh taught to you go back in into the first principles as well because you need a solid foundation in order to build a house and i'm talking of course uh from a symbolic standpoint that we need to be start off from the beginning correctly to come up with the right result at the end to be pleasing to god acceptable to him holding of course saved when all is said and done. So again, we ask you to uh, like, share, and subscribe as well. Moving on to one more free resource we want to make you aware of. Again, we love to use social media to spread the word of God. One other tool that we use is TikTok. Uh, a lot of younger crowd and some of us middle-aged people, we love TikTok. And so we love to put God's word on TikTok. And so you would go to the word Bible understanding. That's what you would search by to find our channel there at YouTube. Excuse me, at TikTok. And of course, the one minute inspirations, the daily devotional that I explained a little bit earlier that on YouTube, they actually were designed for TikTok. But we also post them on YouTube as well. And so if you're more of a person that's more prone and you prefer TikTok, go there and you'll get the one minute inspirations that are there as well to lift you up and to be able to share with others as well. Thanks for going through that brief intermission with us as now we are able to go through our study of Romans chapter number 14. And we're going to begin with the first two verses, which are great impact verses upon myself for the last uh, two or three decades now. But it reads as follows. Again, this is out of the King James Version. Romans chapter 14, verse 1 to verse number 2 says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Again, that's Romans chapter 14, verse 1 and verse number 2. An alternate translation of Romans chapter 14, verse 1 comes from the New American Standard 1995 version that reads, Now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. Now this shows us that not all people who are members of the church believe the same things regarding deeds that do not relate to salvation. I want us to keep that in mind. We're dealing with uh, opinions in the church that are not related to salvation. So these are things that the scriptures are often silent upon. But we must work together in order to come to a conclusion that doesn't violate the scripture at the same time. You see, in these situations, if we're not careful, 
The church can be divided by opinions that are not based on scripture. We must remember that we all come from different backgrounds and cultures. Remember that. Because what Paul is dealing with, people that came from different backgrounds and cultures, now they have to work together in order to keep peace in the church without violating the scriptures at the same time. As Christians, we must accept these differences, especially along culture that happens among each other. Because remember, the gospel is going out to the whole entire world and we can't try to make everyone carbon copies of us from especially a cultural standpoint. See, again, we must accept these differences among each other as long as we are not violating the scriptures. And in, fa in fact, we are not to look down upon the opinions of others as inferior or means to disfellowship other Christians because they disagree on non-salvational issues. See, one of the issues in the first century where there was a division of opinions was regarding whether one could eat meat or not. There was a portion of the membership of the church who were vegetarians. That's why it said they ate herbs. If the word of God had not intervened to make sure they would stay in fellowship with each other, then division could have easily ripped the church apart. So again, people that came from these backgrounds and only ate herbs, for instance, instead of meats presented from them, would have been people from Gentile and Jewish backgrounds, from uh, modern-day Greece, from modern-day Italy, from modern-day Northern Africa, from all over the Middle East, etc., all over Europe and Asia. So all these cultures had to come together in the church and make peace. So they're not all going to eat the same things because we don't do that now from a human standpoint. So Paul had to, through the Holy Spirit's guidance, reveal things unto them in order to keep the peace. This brings us to verse 3, verse number 4 of Romans 14 that reads as follows according to the King James Version. Let not him that eateth despiseth him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgeth another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. Again, that's Romans chapter 14, verse 3 and verse number 4 out of the King James Version. Now, let's move on to verse number 3 in detail, that is. Again, it says, Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Now, verse 3 now, let's look at this for a moment, is showing us the attitude that disagreeing Christians must have toward each other. When it comes to non-salvational issues that arise in the church, first and foremost, God is showing us that we are not to look down upon each other. Neither person on either side of the non-salvational argument is superior in any way because God loves them both. They are both servants of God and they both have been given the same salvation. Thus, no one in the church should develop a superiority mindset toward anyone else in the church. Christ is the head and savior of us all, not ourselves. Now, this moves us on to verse number four. Again, it says out of the King James Version, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Now, this verse makes it clear that Christians don't have the right to judge each other on the aspect of non-salvational issues. Of course, the specific non-salvational issue presented is whether someone can eat meat or be a vegetarian. So obviously, we're not talking about something that can deny us heaven or earn us hell, whether we eat meat or not. God is not concerned with these things at all. But still, he had to intervene in order to keep the peace in the church in the first century. And even now, we go into issues that have nothing to do with salvation that can so also divide us, right? Remember, God is the master of both parties who are at odds. He accepts them both. Thus, no one has a say in God's decision. In other words, he makes the decisions, not ourselves. So God's ruling is always final. He loves all his children, no matter what cultural background they come from. Now, this brings us to Romans chapter 14, verse 5 and verse number 6. Again, out of the King James Version, it says, One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. 
he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Again, that's Romans chapter 14, verse 5, and verse number 6. Now let's move into the study of Romans chapter 14, verse number 5, in depth, that says, One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now regarding this verse, Romans 14, verse 5 again, God is showing us that the earlier Christians did not agree on holy days. Remember, the church was made up of both Christians that came from a Jewish and non-Jewish background. So again, we're talking about another non-salvational issue Paul is addressing here. Some of the Jewish Christians were still holding on to the Old Testament holidays that non-Jewish Christians did not have to adhere to. Non-Jewish Christians thought all of the days were the same. In other words, you didn't have holy days. Now, Barton W. Johnson, back in 1891, sums up the thought of God on this verse with the following comment that I quote. Let each act as he thinks right. If he thinks he ought to observe the days, let him do as his conscience demands. If he thinks otherwise, let him not observe them. In other words, and that's the end quote that is. In other words, it didn't really matter. And this is what God is actually trying to teach us in this passage of scripture with yet another um, example of non-salvational issues not allowing it to divide us in the church. Now let's move into the realm of Romans chapter 14, verse number 6 that says, He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Now, lastly, regarding this verse, Romans chapter 14, verse number 6, we have the subject of eating meat again that was disagreed upon by early Christians. Remember, there was nothing wrong with eating any type of meat as long as it was eaten with thanksgiving to God. That means pork, that means beef, that means everything forbidden to the Jews in the Old Testament was now legitimate and okay to eat in the sight of God. Acts chapter 15, verse 19 and 20, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 4. In this verse, Paul is showing the church that whether one eats meat or vegetables primarily, God is still glorified by the thanksgiving unto him by both groups for providing for them. So what he's showing them is that it's the most important part is to give God thanks for what you have, no matter where it came from. That's what Paul is really teaching them. And we should do all the time. That's why we say grace before we eat, because we want to give God thanks for what he has provided for us. This brings us to Romans chapter 14, verse 7 and verse number 9 out of the King James Version that reads, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that we might, that he might, that is, be Lord both of the dead and living. Again, that's Romans chapter 14, verse 7 and verse number 9, out of the King James Version. Now let's look at Romans chapter 14, verse number 7 in detail. Again, it reads, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Now we as Christians, when we hear these statements from God, are definitely humbled by the teachings of Romans chapter 14, verse 7 and verse number 8. This is because it shows that our lives and deaths do not belong to us. That should strike us because it's saying both our life and our death do not belong to us. In other words, both processes are owned by God. Yes, whether I live or die is based on God's decisions each day of my li our life, all of our lives, that is. Thus, since we are made to serve God, we must devote our lives to his service, even in death. We are not released from service unto him. That is profound when you think about what the Holy Spirit just said. Again, even in death, we are not released from service unto him. We will serve him for eternity. So we might as well get used to doing it now and do it with joy because it's a pleasure to serve the Lord. Again, we are still his servants whether we are living or in the afterlife. 
This is why we must defeat selfishness and rebellion in our own lives by a faithful commitment to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to verse number 2, that says the following according to the New King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this brings us to our in-depth study of Romans chapter 14, verse number 9, which again says, For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Now this verse, Romans chapter 14, verse number 9, is showing us that Jesus died and rose from the dead. Of course, that is the foundation of our faith, first and foremost, because we do not serve a dead Savior. A dead Savior cannot save us, only a living Savior. So it is stressed throughout the Bible and stressed throughout the Christian faith that Jesus rose again. Without this foundational knowledge, we can never be saved. There is no such thing as some heretics have gone out to say that Jesus never rose from the dead. Well, they would never be saved because that is the foundation of the Christian faith. It is the identifier of Jesus being the Son of God, also known as the Messiah, the Lord and Savior. So these two events, Jesus died and rising from the dead, shows that he is the Lord of the dead. He's in control of them too. Because he was among them and he is the ruler of the living because he was among them too. So he is the ruler of both realms of human existence. Even all mankind on earth and the angels in heaven are under his authority. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 shows us this. That's why Jesus said before he ascended back into heaven after his resurrection, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. We will all answer to him at the end of the day. So we might as well fall in line and do what he says because that's our only way we'll be guaranteed eternal life and favor on the judgment day. Thank you as always for your attention thus far in the lesson. Now we've come down further in the chapter to verses 10 to verse number 12 in Romans chapter 14, which we're going to read right now. Once again, it says, but why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Again, that's Romans chapter 14, verse 10 to verse number 12, King James Version. Now let's look at verse number 10 specifically. Again, it asks, and it's the Holy Spirit speaking through the Apostle Paul, the divine word of God says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, Christians are not allowed to have a condescending attitude toward other Christians. This is what we get from this passage of Scripture. We are also not to formulate opinions about other Christians as being too evil for God to serve. That's not our place. In other words, we cannot look down upon other Christians or condemn them. We do not have the authority to say so. We don't have the authority to do so. We don't even have the authority to think so. See, only Jesus is the judge of mankind. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and verse number 2. Keep in mind, God never said that we have all power in heaven and earth. Only Jesus does. And that's why he is the judge. That's the, only, that's the reason why he is the only one that can be fair and impartial to all mankind, including the church. Keep in mind, we get those condescending attitudes toward other Christians. We have put ourselves on the throne instead of Christ who rightfully belongs there. We are usurping authority, as the Bible would say. In other words, we're taking authority that does not belong to us. As such, though, remember, we cannot replace him as the ultimate decision maker regarding the spiritual state and destination of God's service. That is not our territory nor our area of dominion. We don't have that control in this earth. Remember, we are all servants of Jesus, and at the end of the day, we are saved by grace. 
due to the fact that none of us have lived in perfection. Please, I beseech you, as Paul would say, I beg of you never to put yourself on the level of being so arrogant that you think you deserve heaven. No, we are gifted heaven. We are gifted salvation. That means we have not earned it. Yes, we have to live the best life we can as far as Christian obedience. But at the end of the day, it is Christ's blood, God's mercy, and grace are the things that gets us through the pearly gates of heaven, which we also know as salvation. So if we think otherwise, we are deceiving ourselves because we do still sin after we're Christians. First John chapter 1, verse 7 to verse number 10. It's only grace through the blood that saves us. Remember what God is stressing in this passage of scripture specifically. We must all stand as individuals in front of Jesus on the judgment day. We cannot plead relative righteousness. Those are big words. Let me break that down a little bit for us. In other words, we cannot compare ourselves to other Christians and believe that we'll make it to heaven because we are somehow better than the next person. God does not compare us to each other. So we will not get any special commendations or special uh, privileges because we are so-called better than the next person. No, we're judged as individuals. So the, what the next person does makes no difference to God. What we do uh, on our own volition or in response to other people, we have to realize that our standard of comparison is against the perfection of Jesus Christ alone. And of course, we all fall short, that is, when we compare to our sinless Savior. We'll never measure up to him in perfection. That's what grace is for, for those shortcomings, so that God doesn't see them on the judgment day, because those shortcomings have been paid for by the spilled blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 16. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. And other passages of scripture show us that yes, we have to live the righteous life. But at the end of the day, we still fall short of the total righteousness necessary for us to be saved on our own merit. It is only because we get a pass, we get a pardon, we get atonement, we get forgiveness, however you want to say it, because of the grace of God shown to us by the death of his son, Jesus, on the cross of Calvary. Now let's move on to the last grouping of verses we're going to study for the evening. And then we'll segue into God's plan of salvation and just some uh, final announcements and end our lesson for the day. Uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 10 to verse number 12 is what we're talking about, but we're going to look at specifically verse 11 to verse number 12 that says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now these two verses, verse 11 to verse number 12, we see again the sovereignty of Jesus Christ on display as said in different wording, but the same thought. Sovereignty means what? All power given unto him that no man can resist and get away with it. Remember, he is king of kings and lord of lords. First Timothy chapter six, verse 14 and 15. Thus, we must surrender to his authority in our lives to be saved. We keep fighting it through a lack of belief or rebellion or hypocrisy. We're not going to have a favorable outcome on the judgment day. Remember, not only is Jesus King of kings and Lord of lords, but he is the judge of all mankind on the judgment day to come for all of us per 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and verse number 2. As a result, all of mankind will have no choice when that great day comes to confess him as Lord, which means the Son of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and verse number 10, Acts chapter 8, verse 37. The only difference between confessing him now and on the judgment day will be that the confession on the judgment day will be too late. Can I say it? Will be too late. We must do it now while we are still in the land of the living to be saved. It is best to never procrastinate regarding salvation as it is eternally most important. Remember, do not procrastinate. Salvation is the most important thing that you can do for yourself through the blood of Jesus Christ beyond anything else you can think of. There's nothing on this earth worth waiting for or, sa or sacrificing salvation for. You need to be saved and need to be saved today. 
So again, thanks for joining us in this portion of Romans. It was part number 35, uh, beginning with the topic of the compromises Christians must make with each other to keep unity. But it also we trans uh, we we also went into that is transferred our thoughts into more topics of the sovereignty of Jesus uh, as well. So feel free to continue to watch this video, replay it, take notes on it, and share it with others so that they too can know about how to keep peace in the church as well as the importance of salvation. Be an ally by helping spread the word of Almighty God. So at this point, we're going to transition to God's plan of salvation so that you who have not uh, made Jesus your Lord and Savior can know how to do that and make it and make it uh, happen today. And for those that have fallen uh, uh, or those that need to spread the gospel, let me say it that way. You can also be reminded of what you can do to help share the gospel with other uh, people on this planet that do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior. God bless you. All of this is an urgency for all of us. Don't procrastinate. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and hopefully see you at one of the live worship services at the Henry Street Church of Christ. And of course, here on Facebook Live and YouTube on Wednesday nights. God bless you. It's been my pleasure serving you. Have a good day. Please do not forget the reason Jesus came to the earth in the first place. He said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. So he came to save mankind. The Bible says in John 14, verse 1 and verse number 2, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. You can only get to that heavenly glory, eternal life, and the bliss of heaven through Jesus Christ being the head of your life. We know this from several passages of scripture. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 tells us, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the savior of the body. Savior of the body means he's a savior of all those that are in the church. Body and church are the same organization of people. The same selected group that will go on to heaven as we have uh, studied in the past. But also, the Bible also says in Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, that Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's salvation in no other name but his. And Jesus said himself also in John 14, verse number 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So what did he lay down as the way to get to heaven? Of course, through himself. What did he say we have to do, in other words? Of course, he said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. The Bible also says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to verse number 3, that in these last days, God speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. So what does the word of God reveal to us? Remember, the word of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus are one. And so what is said? Well, first of all, you got to hear the word of God, Romans 10, verse 17. You got to believe what God's word actually says. John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The third part of the plan of salvation is repentance. That is, you're committing to the Christian lifestyle of living, of living that is, righteously and leaving a sinful lifestyle alone. Luke 13, 3 and verse 5, Acts 2, 38 teaches us this point. Uh, the fourth part of the plan of salvation is that we must confess audibly, that is, verbally, with our mouths, that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see this commanded uh, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse number 10. And you'll also see that it was done as an example for us in Acts chapter 8, verse 37 by the Ethiopian eunuch before he was saved. And the fifth part of the plan of salvation is called baptism. The Bible speaks of baptism very highly and as commanded for us to do in order to be saved. Baptism serves several purposes. Uh, the Bible says, number, uh, number one, that it puts us in Christ. In other words, those who have been baptized have been baptized into Christ, Galatians 3, verse 27. Remember the word body in the church, God's family. Um, in Christ, they all mean the same thing, that we're now part of God's people that are saved. So baptism puts you in that situation where you'll be classified no longer as alienated from God's family, but you'll be a part of the family once you're baptized in the water grave of baptism, as was done in Acts chapter number eight by the Ethiopian eunuch. Um, baptism also serves a second function. 
It is where God forgives you of your sins. God calls that washing away your sins. You see it in Acts chapter 22, verse number 16. Acts chapter 22, verse, excuse me, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38 as well, teaches us that that's when God will forgive us of our sins. And lastly, after you come out of the, uh, after you go on the water grave of baptism, baptism served another point. It, it does change your status from unsaved to saved. Because Jesus said, Mark chapter 16, verse number 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Peter said the same thing. Uh, as well, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, he says, Baptism doth now save us. That means baptism does save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. So when you come out of the water grave of baptism, that's when you become born of water and the spirit. As God told, uh, cord, uh, the God told uh, Nicodemus, that is, in John chapter number 3, you got to be born of water and of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that wrote the Bible. And so he is the one leading you to the water for you to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. So please follow the Holy Spirit all the way to the water so that you can be reborn, a new child of God. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to verse 20, about the agreement of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit about one being baptized. It, it, he tells us that we are to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which means by the authority of all three who are one in God. All right, so after you come out of the water grave of baptism, your reaction should be just like the Ethiopian eunuch man who got out of that water rejoicing because now you know you have a good conscience. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21, that is God will never hold anything that you have done against you ever again because what God forgives, he forgets. And of course, you have to stay committed to the Christian life. That's the sixth step in God's plan of salvation where Jesus said, as an example unto us in Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10, he said, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So I call it a stairway to heaven, God's plan of salvation, that is. Again, step number one, you got to hear the word of God. Step number two is you got to believe it concerning Jesus Christ being the Son of God, which means your Lord and Savior. Step three, as you proceed higher, if you want to use a visual, symbolically speaking, is repentance, that is, uh, a commitment to the Christian life. Step four is confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord, meaning the Son of God. Step five is baptism into the body of Christ for the remission of your sins. That is the forgiveness of your sins and salvation of your soul. And step six is the commitment of living unto Christ unto death. In other words, we're surrendering our lives to Christ. We're living in righteousness and sacrificing sinful things in order to be, be, uh, be saved and have heaven as our home. So those are six steps unto heaven. God bless you. Please seek out your local Church of Christ congregation. I'm sure that the minister there... The church leadership and the elders will be willing to embrace you, take your confession and baptize you even this day for the forgiveness of your sins and salvation of your soul. Please don't forget you have a cordial and open and warm invitation to always come out and worship with us. We worship on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time at the following address, 309 Henry Street in the city of Gadsden, Alabama. 35901 is our zip code. And you can find out more about us very easily at the touch of a button on our website at www.henrystreetchurchofchrist.com. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you soon. Again, as a friendly reminder, don't forget our free resources out there for personal Bible study. Again, you can reach us at youtube.com and you can find us by typing in my name, Anthony L. Norwood or the Henry Street Church of Christ, and you'll come to the right place. Remember to look for the icon with my um, face on it, you know, black suit, red tie with a banner that says Bible study series, and you have come to the right place. We encourage you to subscribe, like, and share the videos so that we can all together as United unified team, excuse me, push the gospel out there and make it available to uh, all willing hearts that will listen to and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ unto their salvation. Last but not least, don't forget we do have the other platform out there to get the word of God out there, which is basically designed for our daily devotional, the one minute inspiration. So if you're not much of a YouTube person, don't worry, don't fret. You can also use our TikTok uh, page also for your daily inspiration. Just go to TikTok.com and type in Bible Understanding, which is our whole name there, and you'll come to uh, the right page. You'll see the clock there, just symbolism of a very short lesson there that's designed to uh, inspire you, to encourage you, to educate you, and make you strong in Christ. 
So again, we look forward to seeing you on the next occasion on Facebook Live and or YouTube. And of course, on our Sunday morning worship service at the Henry Street Church of Christ. Again, 309 Henry Street, Gadsden, Alabama, USA, 35901 www.henrystreetchurchofchrist.com. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.